Hey guys, this is Brad from Dallas Geek, and I'm here today with Judith Bryles. And we are here talking about your current uh, set of books. Yeah. Which the most recent that you said just came out is hot, hot, sizzling. Nice. Yes. Is the how to create a million dollar speech. Yes. Very nice. So let's start with this. Okay. Tell me a little bit about this book. Well, speaking is the number one way to sell books. Yeah. Number uno, and you all need to understand that, mm -hmm. authors. And when people say, but you know, I don't want to market myself, you've heard this a zillion mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. or I don't know how to speak, you've learned. And so the clients I work with in my consulting site learn that there are three words I work with to get over it. And that you, there are techniques to learn from storytelling, even people uh, who, who write fiction, authors who write fiction. Storytelling is your thing. Let's start with the story. We just need some props to add into it. You gauge them, rope them in, you'll have a great time, and you will sell books. People will want to take you home. So there's just tips and it goes through. So it goes through, I actually do a two-day intensive called the Judith Brown Speaking Unplugged, where they learn it's a boot camp. Okay. Where I work coach all, you know, and I limit it to 30 people. And we work together and we do that structuring, but this goes through and there's a, it, 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 it gets into whether it's storytelling, that where do you find gigs, call them gigs, um, that um, how do you contract, when do you speak for free, when do you go to fee, how do you engage it, you know, how do I pitch myself, um, I have a great chapter in it on contracts. Wow. In fact, in fact anyone who buys the book, if they will send me an email, and show me that they bought the book, I will send it to them in PDF. Um, really? And, and, and what it does is it has all the legalese. Okay. It was developed by an attorney and that's been modified over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but then I go through the rationale why you want this. Okay. You know, whether it's a CYA or you want to clarify or even when you speak for free, for example, you do it with a contract and you let them know what your regular fee is and in effect, because I've told people, says, so you're asking me to donate $5,000 to your organization. What will I get in return? Mm -hmm. And you go silent. Sure. Well, what do you mean? Uh, if you want me, if you don't have any budget, and you want me to waive my fee, what will I get in return? And I'll be damned. I got a computer one time. Um, I, they come up with, all of a sudden, they, you know, things come out of the wall <laughs> that they can get some donations for stuff. Or they'll say, you know, we'll do a full page, we'll do a full spread in our magazine that goes out. Okay, that might cost a couple thousand dollars to buy. So you start learning how to do some of that. So that is really, um, I had one, one person who bought it and Skyped me and he, and he held it up and said, gold, contract, gold. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The, the one thing that uh, my partner Mike and I have uh, learned, uh, even from our own uh, show and doing uh, content online, mm -hmm. is that the second you start trying to get into any kind of business deals that do involve contracts and you're uh, beyond oh, no, just that, that right. handshake, oh my gosh, th there's so much that you start to really second guess yourself on or even start to realize you don't really know much about of, yeah. well, wait, okay, so do I need to know about this or what what happens if this happens? Do, is there any way that I can possibly know, am I covered or am I in trouble or whatever? Oh, I even had to add a clause in there, for example, I had someone, rarely have I ever had a cancellation, but and the, the corporate world will cancel. Yeah. Right, so and we, we have, we, uh, you know, anywhere from a, um, almost six months out if you cancel, full fee. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always try to work things out. If this thing like happened, one group, um, canceled and we had three other gigs attached on it with airfare mm -hmm. all right and because of whatever was going on and so now you're in a rebooking and it cost me eight hundred dollars to rebook that yep. we now have a clause in there if there is a cancellation and anything else is tied on they are responsible for any change in other fees Okay. And and those are just little things you actually learn as you go along. But just, you know, from the back of, who do I call? I mean, one of the things I do is when I land on a plane, I, I text, I've landed. Okay. Let them know I'm roaming around now. And, and just a variety of, yeah. of things and tips that you have to do uh, as a speaker in setting up. I mean, I've, I've spoken in hurricanes. I have spoken when all the lights have gone out. Um, and the, the thing is, you're the show. And I always love it when people say, 
okay, so you know, what videos are you going to show? And I said, on the show. <laughs> you know? And uh, sometimes I use slides, but you should be able to go without that. You're the show. You yeah. know your material. Yes, you wrote the book. You don't wrote the book. <laughs> or, or someone wrote it for you. Read it. Uh, <laughs> That, that you can uh, go in and wing it yes um, if you have to and I've certainly had to tap dance do things now the, the the title how to create a million dollar speech um, I've done it okay um, in my career I started keeping track of book sales from um, 87 on and I, I can tell that in combined to date I've uh, created over five million dollars in revenues and I can tell you three million dollars of that is from my mouth. Nice. Two million is from book sales. Very nice. And when people hear you, they want to take you home. So. Yeah. No, personality makes so much of a difference, yeah. especially uh, you know when you actually are able to walk into a bookstore these days and there are so many options. And then you go online and you see even more, uh, being able to actually hear and experience the author's personality, it, yeah. it, it makes a massive difference. Well, Brad, here's the other thing, is that when you become a speaker, you actually don't care about bookstores. Really? It's minor. It's minor. Okay. I will tell you that 95% um, of all my sales are full sales, full retail, immediate pay to me. Wow. Very nice. And although I was in bookstores, you know, and I have that, but as you, as you more in, in when it comes to the publishing market today, 2018 forward, mm -hmm. over half of all book sales are from the small press, independent, self-published market today. Mm -hmm. Over half. Awesome. So we've created an evolution revolution I didn't know that was happening and in fact how I got into the crossover is I had a call from a client in Seattle that had booked me to come in and speak about finance for parenting teaching kids I had a book on that mm -hmm. and um, that they called they said well could you contact your publisher um, and see if you could get a discount if we bought some books a few books Okay, so th first of all, I'm thinking a few. That's not very many. That's fine. I can, I, and I and I had just taken back the rights to that book. Okay. Okay. And only sixty existed. So few and sixty, I sure. should be covered. Sure. And I said, you know, I'm sure I can. So what kind of discount are you looking for? And they said, well, what do you think? And I said, oh, I'm sure I can get at least twenty five percent. Twenty five percent would be terrific. And I said, well, great. Okay, so I'll commit to that. And I said, fine. We want fifteen hundred copies. Oh, wow. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so I had a quick conversation with the plant in the corner. <laughs> and I said, you know what, we can do that. Now, this book I want to do rewriting on. Number one, anytime you write finance, and I wrote many, many, many books. I mean, mm -hmm. if the, my employer at that time, I was with E.F. Hutton, had realized that, you know, what I could do and all that, because I was a great broker. See, sure. I was one of their little stars. But that um, I would have been Susie Orman at that time. Okay. But that was long before those people existed, all right? Sure. Because I went to them and said, I have an idea, creating a whole little thing for women and money, because that's what I was evolving into. Sure. My very first book was called The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy. Three printings in three weeks. Wow. New York snapped it up, okay? Wow. So, and that's how I entered publishing. I thought, oh God, it's always like this. Taking care of, limos, <laughs> escorts everywhere. <laughs> Waldo nice. Astoria when I went to New York. Lovely. Nice. Yeah, Good Morning America was my first TV show. Okay, so. Wow, talk about a bar. Okay, so that, <laughs> yeah, that's how I started. That's how, that was my, that's, I thought, well, this yeah. is the way it is. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Wow. But anyway, the um, uh, I, I had to now find. Oh, I'm in control. Yeah. Okay. So I have to find a cover designer. I've got to find someone to lay it out. For that turn, I found someone who laid out one of my other books for freelancer. You know, I, I discovered that. Um, and the only really screw up I did was I knew nothing about printing, and I paid twice what I should have paid. Sure. Um, but I was able to negotiate enough for over 2,000 books 
uh, to pay for a full run of 2,000 books. So they got their books, they paid me, um, and I now had an inventory. Well, I'm in business. And that's what started, that's what started it. And I will say that the only way I would even consider working with New York is if they paid me so much money, I don't care how they screwed up. Sure. Other than that, um, I like being in control. You know, being in control and the whole publishing, it's, 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 there's a control factor. You have your input, it's respected, you, you know, you have understanding that you have approval, <laughs> um, quality. And any, anybody who will invest in it can match the quality that comes out of New York. Sure. And, and then it's about timing. Uh -huh. That, you know, I'm not willing to wait 18 months to two years to get a book out now. Uh -huh. You know, we move much faster, so you're looking at three, four months. Sure. Um, and it, when the manuscript's done, go to editing, layout, da da da, and then money. And what people don't realize, Brad, is the average book, mid-list. Most, you know, people were at a conference here mm -hmm. where you and I met, but that they're, they're mid-list authors. They're not the front runner, you know, the, the big boys, the yeah. girls. Yeah. Um, and they're mid-list. So that book, if it's picked up for New York, its life sales are about 5,000 copies. Sure. We're talking about less than $3,000 gross to you. Yeah. Is that really worth that? up to two year wait, then trickle it in. Not if you learn that publishing is a business, and that's what I'm about. Publishing is a business. There's a P&L to it. Yeah. There is, you need to understand, every book is a product. And you have to move from being the CWO, mm -hmm. Chief Writing Officer, mm -hmm. to the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer. Yep. And that's the difference between success and failure. Which actually uh, leads me into uh, asking about your other two books here, because mm -hmm. you said these were very much about the uh, nature of publishing yes, today. Yes, the whole series, yeah. Uh, you have the crowdfunding guide for authors and writers, yep. and how to uh, avoid 101 book publishing blunders, bloopers, and boo-boos. Yeah, screw-ups. Nice. The mistakes. So, and we all make them. Everybody, you're a big, big party here. <laughs> so these books, uh, as part of yeah, and the they series, make a series. They offer you mini guide series. Nice. Uh, so this, uh, these three books are meant to be a good point of direction for uh, independent authors to be able to say, what do I need to know getting into publishing for my own work, so exactly. that they don't have to rely on somebody like the big publishers to take out most of their profits. Once you figure out, you know what you're going to make and. and that what, what they will make if they sell to New York, if it's a, if it's a paper, mm. um, they will make anywhere from seven to nine percent of net. If, if the book is, um, let's use ten dollars because this ones and O's are so much easier to multiply. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you're talking about net, you're talking about they might, uh, the probably your big publisher might gross four dollars a book, okay. four fifty a book. If you're getting seven to nine percent of the four. 50, we're talking about 40 to 60 cents mm -hmm. a book. That's all you're going to make. Yep. And like you said, if, if the life of that book 5, is 5,000 copies. Do the math, people. Yeah. Okay, so if you learn how, let's go back to my favorite new one, How to Create a Million Dollar Speech. If you go back to that little baby, um, if, you're, if you can connect, if, you, if you're a nonfiction author, this is a no-brainer. And, and you go out and you connect, and your uh, money doesn't make the world go around, Brad. It's problems. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can solve their problem, and even for fiction writers, I told the group this morning, you're problem solvers too. You're going to problem solve. I need a break. I need some entertainment. I need to laugh, or I want to be spooked, or I want to mm -hmm. dive into a thriller. You're going to solve my problem and give me the read I'm looking for. You're, we're all problem solvers yeah. in this room. Mm -hmm. And so when you can do that connection, they want to take you home. When you're speaking, you're there. You're there, and you get paid, and that's it. It's nice. the best. Nice. Well, these sound like very intriguing reads, and I, I'm genuinely uh, interested in checking out, especially that one, uh, because uh, this How to Create a Million Dollar Speech, uh, it sounds like it has a lot of stuff that could really uh, cross uh, mm -hmm. the, the gaps of various 
um, businesses. Well, so, for, for a lead generator, yeah. for building your business and do whatever. So come and get a copy, you know, my gift to you. Yeah. I just ask, and this is what all authors need to do. Please post an honest review. Oh, yeah. And this is critical. I mean, this is part of the marketing side. The Amazon gods or robots, whoever they are, mm -hmm. whoever they are, mm -hmm. um, it really is important to get those, they're, they're pumping out. And we, this book officially is launched in the middle of August. So. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if you are an independent author or just really love the business of publishing and want to learn more about it, uh, absolutely come check out her books. Here we go. The link to where you can find them will be down in the description below. And until next time, this is Brad from Dallas Geek saying, see ya.